Here we're going to look at cannabis at the cellular level. So plants are composed of systems. Plant, the organism, have a collection of systems that work together to produce a functional plant. Two main systems include the shoot system, which is what we see here, and below ground we have the supporting root system. Now the plant organs work in unison to perform a unique function for the plant. There's that shoot system that we typically see above ground are the leaves, the stems, and the flower. Leaves capture the sun's energy, the stems support the plant structure, and the flower is the site of reproduction. Below ground here, the root system, we have the primary, which are the main thick roots, the lateral roots, which are initially branched from the primary root, and then what we really can't see are really fine structures we call root hairs. These are at the end of the lateral roots in their main site of nutrient and water absorption. So these very thin, small regions have a very high surface area, allowing for efficient absorption of nutrients and water in the soil or substrate. Now the organs contain specialized tissues that allow for proper function. We see here the leaves, which contain chloroplasts, which is the main site for the photosynthetic process. The stems uh, contain xylem and phloem, which help move water and nutrients to the plant. Flowers contain either male or female structures. This plant's too young to tell whether it's a male or a female. So in here is a female uh, structure here. Roots uh, have an epidermis, which is the outer covering, which is similar function to yours. It offers protection. And they contain the ground and vascular tissues. And again, the main site of nutrient and water absorption. In those uh, plant tissues, there's organized cells. We have guard cells, which regulate water and carbon dioxide exchange. These guard cells are on the underside of leaves, and they are pores, and plants need to breathe. Uh, so this is kind of what helps allow them to breathe and expel water. And then when it's a time of water stress, they will close what we call the stomata, which are pores on the under, mainly on the underside of leaves. Xylem cells transport mainly water and minerals uh, in one direction, from the roots to the shoots, from the bottom of the plant to the top of the plant. And pollen is the male sex cells. We see kind of here caught in a little bit of the wind. All these work in unison. All aspects of the plant, including photosynthesis, growth, development, are all controlled by the genetic material or the DNA. We see that double helix structure here. It's located mainly in the nucleus of the cell. And it's organized into structures called chromosomes. However, there are some unique DNA found in both the mitochondria and the chloroplasts. Plant regulations, well, living systems need to be able to maintain a relatively stable internal conditions despite ever fluctuating external conditions in order to stay alive. This process of maintaining this balance here is called homeostasis. Now this is balancing internal conditions, so it's not like maintaining homeostasis with time and money, uh, this is internal conditions. This process is often regulated by hormones which are produced in the cells to allow the plant, or in this case in the organism, to counteract changes in their external conditions to maintain that stable internal environment we call homeostasis.